specific. Could could you tell me a little bit could, about could the WILT system? About WILT stands for WILT stands for whole body interdiction of lengthening of telomeres, which is a horrible long name that I only got away with because I thought of a nice catchy acronym. Um, essentially, what I have proposed is that since cancer is so far and away the hardest part of aging to fix, um, we really ought to be willing to contemplate. Um, therapies which have, um, you know, which, 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 which hit cancer really hard, but which have side effects that in a way exacerbate other aspects of aging, because that other aspects, even after being exacerbated, may be easier to address than cancer itself is. Uh, and um, that general concept led me rather quickly, um, maybe 10 years ago now, to the realization that focusing on the um, discrimination between cancer cells and non-cancer cells, in other words, trying to design therapies that specifically targeted cancer cells and left the rest of our cells alone, may have been the big mistake that we've been making all this time. That essentially the, um, the, 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 ability of cancer cells to masquerade as non-cancer cells when um, selective pressure is imposed upon them to do so is so powerful, uh, they're so good at doing that, that if we really try to keep the um, harm that we're doing to non-cancer cells really low, then we're never going to succeed. There's always going to be uh, cancer cells that escape and figure out how to um, how, to, how to escape the therapy simply by having the same characteristics that, um, that non-cancer cells have that the therapy is um, interrogating, so to speak, in order to make this discrimination. So having realized that, I then realized that if we want something that is um, indiscriminate, that is going to affect all our cells, then we definitely need something that only hurts non-cancer cells after a long latency period that's basically harmless to even to non-cancer cells for at least several years and that would mean since i'm talking about something that's not trying to be discriminating that it would also be harmless to cancer cells for several years but maybe that would be okay and the obvious candidate was telomere shortening which is something that, as we know, does occur during cell division in most of our cells, and indeed almost certainly is responsible for the elimination of a very large number of cancers that we never see because they're gone by the time that by the time they they would be seen. Um, so what I've suggested is that once we have developed sufficiently safe and sufficiently effective somatic gene therapy, which of course is itself still some way off that we might be able to use gene targeting to delete, not just to um, suppress, but actually to delete the genes for telomerase and also ideally the genes that are underlying the, um, uh, the telomerase independent lengthening of telomere mechanism that perhaps 10% of our human cancers use, um, that we should delete these genes and delete them completely indiscriminately from all our cells. So it's sort of preemptively, really, so that um, so that cancers may get going, but they will never be able to grow large enough to kill us. Um, so, of course, as um, advertised, so to speak, this proposal would indeed have enormous side effects. It would cause the um, you know, the, the, the stem cell compartments of uh, rapidly renewing tissues, such as the blood or the skin or the gut, to um, uh, to fail uh, fairly uh, uh, fairly quickly, uh, certainly much more quickly than they currently do. They would not last a currently normal lifetime. Uh, the calculations that I did led me to the conclusion that they would probably last only about 10 years. But I realized that that might be okay, that we might be able to actually keep those tissues going simply by doing periodic stem cell replenishment essentially putting stem cells back into these tissues, into the various compartments of these tissues, um, every 10 years or so. So that even though the individual stem cells were not immortal anymore, the way they normally are, 
the tissues themselves would keep going indefinitely. Okay, so that's Wilt. Knock off telomere um, gene, telomere extension genes, so that even in a hypermutagenic situation such as a cancer cell, there is no way that telomere elongation can be turned on and cope with the consequences of that for our stem cell compartments by periodic stem cell therapy. It's undoubtedly an extremely ambitious, extremely difficult um, proposal. It's by a long distance the hardest aspect of my overall game plan for defeating aging. And I hope to goodness that it won't be necessary. I think there is still a possibility that we will be able to defeat cancer, to challenge it sufficiently, back, sufficiently well to, to, to be able to essentially eliminate it um, using other approaches. Specifically, uh, I, I have a lot of hope for immunotherapy against cancer. But the thing is that 40 years ago, as you mentioned, we did have a lot of hope about the possibility of defeating cancer pretty quickly, and we were wrong. And a lot of people who work on, the can on cancer research have been wrong again since that time. I think it's time for us to be very forward-looking and to realize that we might be wrong again, and we should not simply be focusing on what looks today like the easiest option. We should also be getting our teeth into what might be much more ambitious, difficult approaches, but approaches which are much more likely to be genuinely decisive. And then for any of our audience members who don't know, what are telomeres? So telomeres are special sequences at the ends of all our chromosomes. DNA replication is obviously something that has to happen every time a cell divides. And it's a very complicated and sophisticated process, but there's one curious deficiency in the way that DNA replication works, which is that, <coughs> excuse me, which is that it doesn't completely replicate the <coughs> ends of chromosomes. The, the very ends of chromosomes get, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the very ends of chromosomes get shorter as a, <coughs> as a result of DNA replication because the end of the chromosome is not replicated. And of course this potentially is extremely destructive. Uh, over multiple generations through the germline, clearly something has to be done about it. And uh, what is done about it is that evolution has developed an enzyme called telomerase, which compensates for this shortening of the ends of chromosomes by sticking extra additional DNA on the end. Um, uh, some of our stem cells, the ones in rapidly renewing tissues anyway, also express very low amounts of this enzyme, even though those cells are only required to be actually dividing a finite number of times, perhaps a few hundred times during a normal lifespan. Um, so that's why we have telomerase, and it's, it's why we have telomeres. Telomeres are, the sequence of a telomere is a very simple sequence. It's just a, repeat, a repeating pattern of six base pairs, T, 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 A, G, G, and um, that's, the, that's the sequence which is replaced by telomerase. The other purpose of telomeres is actually to prevent the cell from interpreting the end of a chromosome as the result of a chromosome break. Chromosomes are broken all the time by um, mutagens of various sorts. They just you know, have, uh, have um, damage happening to them. Some of that damage actually means the chromosome breaks in two. And there is very sophisticated machinery for stitching the chromosome back together again very quickly. But it's rather important that that should not happen at the end of the chromosome. And the special sequences of telomeres are recognized by a number of proteins that hang on to the telomere sequence specifically and stop that from happening there. And when telomeres get shorter as a result of cell division in the absence of telomerase, uh, what happens is, in fact, the first thing that happens is that chromosomes do get unintentionally joined together. And that's when the cell starts getting in trouble. So the purpose of WILT, the idea of WILT, is to make that happen, to get chromosomes to get shorter and shorter and shorter, and to fail to turn on this enzyme telomerase that would compensate for that, so that eventually they get short enough that chromosomes do get joined together end to end and the cell eventually you know, goes to hell in a handbasket.